community around it, whether it's jungle or liquid or drum and bass, that's there for everyone. And everyone's just one when it comes to the dance floor. I think it sounds like water when you go home after listening to drum and bass or you're in the shower. It's like... Ba -da -da -ba 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 -da -da -ba -ba -da kind of see how it's transformed, you know. Who would have thought a drum and bass influenced track with a trumpet solo, um, a white guy from up north singing on track, um, with sort of like urban elements in there, reaching number one in the UK charts. 15 years after, 20 years after the music kind of kicked off. Who were your biggest influences in drum and bass 20 years ago and how has the scene changed since then? Pirate radio station and the power of word of mouth was unbelievable back then, you know? Like, to hear about an underground rave going on or a new record or a new single coming out from an underground producer was like the best thing. You had Goldie, who was just killing it. Those were big atmospheric moments that I missed out on, but I lived through, through older family members. And it was a kind of vibe in the era where everyone would be there together and it felt like it was a family tight-knit environment. From the stories I've heard, like if I stepped on your shoe, it'd be like, all right, mate, don't worry, come have a drink kind of vibe, you know? And there won't, there won't be any pre-recorded mixes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> With their newest track, I Will For Love, expected to be another smash, and with a world tour starting this month taking their sound global, drum and bass is the biggest it's ever been commercially. But for one-time breakdancer and graffiti artist Goldie, who helped pioneer drum and bass, the music back then was about creative rebellion, unlike what he says is today's formulaic sound. Drum and bass kind of went, F it. You're all, you're all idiots, because I don't believe in any of you now. And I think the thing with drum and bass music, at its, at its pure source, it was the punk of this country. It was about working the music to, to, that was completely fresh and new. And you've got this one record going here, and you've got this record going here, and these two records get into the mix, and they just, they just, they just happen at this moment. And for that moment, it's neither one of those two artists, and it just, it's just hype, it just works. We've had so many influences growing up. One of the biggest influences we've had is sort of like the London underground scene or even the UK underground scene, if you like. Anything from old school garage to house to drum and bass to jungle, you know. We listened to like, like the Goldies of the world and the Ronnie Sizes of the world and we wanted to sort of adapt it and see how we can make it our own. So Goldie and Rudimental both believe in engaging with the crowd live instead of the growing trend for DJs turning up with pre-mixed sets. Well, at the moment, there's a real argument going on in the industry that everyone's engrossed in, talking about that difference between the authentic DJs like yourselves and the new young whippersnappers who are coming in with their pre-programmed memory sticks and putting it in there. Is that a valid argument? I think it's a valid argument because they know it doesn't stand up for anything. It doesn't stand on anything. That stuff's not built on anything. They couldn't tell me, they couldn't really go through a record collection. They couldn't tell me anything about that. Tell me, tell me to go back to back with me and let's see what happens then. Let's see if those DJs there can go back to back with proper DJs and roll it out for three or four hours, five hours. Let's see them do a five hour set. Let's see how the candy acid starts sounding then. I would like to say, you know what, these guys with they, like, their one pre-recorded show, they're putting a lot of work into it in the background and then they reap the rewards when they raise their hands, you know? That's me but being diplomatic. But on the flip side, is it a good thing that we hear drum and bass beats on number one if you, if songs? Hearing, if you're hearing drum and bass played on that situation and the people that are making it are integral enough to know what they're doing, they go, you know what, ah, the game's up. I just to make a record that my 12-year-old could understand. That's down to them, it's their choice to do that. I can't say it's right or wrong. But I do know that it, lacks, it certainly lacks a lot of integrity. The people that are playing it, if you can't believe in the music that you're playing, and do you really believe in what you're playing, really? That's something that I have to question, man. Because I know a lot of people that are up there and they're just waving the arms around. You know, if you put your hands together and you go like this, the crowd will follow you. Really? No Sherlock. And you, you, I say to myself, really, where the f 
do you really come from? So in that respect, some of the people that are playing, playing the music, I've got to question their credentials, man. And I think if you're looking at records that become number one now, in terms of dance music, do those albums stand up as long players? Or are they in the wind? And are we going to listen to them in 20 years' time? It's kind of nice to still be here and to just kind of hope that I think that, I think the EDM thing's burning itself, at the, it's eating its own head at the minute. I mean, it really is. People aren't getting booked as much as they think they're getting booked to do stuff. It's, I think if you, if you never had the internet, okay, would it be as large as it is now? I don't think so. Maybe it's about I mean? telling your kid that music, don't listen to it, go listen to this music. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm getting saying. angry, I'm getting angry now. <laughs>